Hello and welcome to another Let's Play, and today I have for you Fatal Frame, Made in a Blackwater. This is the fifth game in the series, and fifth in the timeline. The fourth game, I believe, takes place before the first game. If you're not familiar with this series, I have done the first three games. If I remember, I will put the links to the playlists for those Let's Plays in the description for this one. They make some interesting choices with this game. So we'll have to see how that goes. So let's go ahead and get started. This first document talks about a place called Mount Hakami, where people keep disappearing, and a girl named Miyu Hinasaki who wakes up in a flooded building. And we recognize that last name from the first game. And we are put in the shoes of this fine young lady. And we don't know where we are nor what we're doing. Always a bad sign. So you have to look around. This is the tutorial portion of the game. We will do the prologue and the first chapter. You basically have to look around until you get grabbed. And once we've done that, then we can actually move forward. Oh jeez, get your ghost hands off of me! Your ghost hands is cold! Now let's get out of here. L2 is your run button. Or left bumper, I think. I'm not really sure which. Kind of annoying. I'm so used to just pressing down on the stick to have your character run, but... Oh well, we will adapt and move on, just like the Borg. So I'm not really sure what purpose this prologue really serves. I guess it's to set the stage for the events or something. I think we play as this chick periodically throughout the game, but she's not our main protagonist. And clearly she's having a bad day. Yeah, we want to get moving now. Gets to stepping. In fairness, we don't really know where we're going. Things are getting kind of creepy. Let's go ahead and move this way. And hopefully that will lead to an exit.
And this is our first insta-kill ghost. Apparently there are a lot in this game. If you are familiar with the other games, you know that there are moments where you get these insta-kill ghosts. The screen gets distorted, we gotta run. Oh yeah, kids, if you're not familiar, this game series is about ghosts. Also a forewarning, this game deals with some sensitive subject matter like self-deletion, so keep that in mind. As Jimmy would say, it's sad, not scary. The original games didn't have chapters like this one has, so that is a bit of a departure for the series. Unless the fourth game has chapters. I've never played that one because it hasn't been released here in the US yet, although in March that's going to change. So by the time this posts, it will already be out, and I will probably have already purchased it. Actually I might be wrong on that, I think the first three games did have something resembling chapters, but they were never separated by a chapter select menu which would allow you to do different things like this game does. They always just flowed naturally into each other. I thought that I'd be scared of death. But I can't even cry. In the end, I am alone. I will end it all. Alone. Yuri? Huh? What we're looking for should be in here. This is an excellent chance for you to take the lead. Here, take this. Ah. This is a camera obscura. It will let you see the unseen, including the clues that will help you find what we're here for. This is your opportunity, your first case. <laughs> I'm sure you'll do well. 
Let's start with a little practice. It works exactly like a normal camera. So this is just a bunch of tutorial nonsense. As we can see, our girl Yuri, who is going to be our primary character, there will be a couple others we will play as, clearly has a bit of depression that could lead to the desire for self-deletion. So, like I was talking about before, sensitive subject matter. The camera obscura photographs the netherworld, a whole other world separate from our own. Awesome. If you've never played a Fatal Frame game before, then this section is for people like you. Make sure not to draw too much interest from the things you see. Well, that's not going to be helped. I'm sure we are going to draw a lot of interest from the things that we see. It's funny how she casually just says, this is a camera obscura. I believe it started being called the camera obscura in the second game. And in the first game, it was treated as a one of a kind item. Now, obviously, after finding notes on that camera in the first game, I can easily believe that more were made that whoever wrote those notes down didn't know about. But it is kind of funny that they make a big deal about it in those early games, and now it's just a casual thing. Oh, this is just a camera that lets you see ghosts. Nothing special here. And there are some annoying little targeting things that we're going to have to do in this game. Not looking forward to it, but oh well. Okay, I would settle for a map. Now don't panic, but be sure to stay on your guard. Go on, and head inside. I played through the second chapter on the PS4. Here's our map. Go on, and head inside. But I decided to buy this on Steam. That way recording would be easier. This is a post-mortem photograph. It's not just a normal photograph. But it seems that this photo came from somewhere around here, and he wants us to see where we can find it. Awesome. Love that overly loud background sounds to drown out the voices. Very cool game. Very cool. Ren is one of the characters we will play as later. Kind of a goofy looking Harry Potter type dude, but oh well. Well, it looks like we will be dealing with the dead in this game, which I already knew that. Yuri, wait. I can sense something. It's called a trace, a shadow of the past. The token is showing you the way. Basically, what it is is a where do I go button, much like in you Dead Space. Which will be really helpful for me. For those who are not familiar with my channel, I am blind, visually impaired, whatever you want to call it. So I will definitely need that. It doesn't help all the time, though. When I was playing Chapter 2 on the PS4, there were times it was not very helpful. 
And this is annoying, so your pickup button is the same as that trace button. So I was trying to pick this up. And it gave me the where do I go button instead, which was annoying. Originally, I was going to read out these files. Although with my bad eyesight, that requires a lot of work on my end. Then I thought, well, I'll just summarize them. That would be a lot of work on me too. So pause these if you want to read them. There are a lot of story details in the Fatal Frame series that you only get in files. So I do recommend reading them. Hopefully I leave them up long enough for you to pause and read them. But I will be silent during the files during this video. I'll probably talk through the rest in the subsequent videos. The stories in the Fatal Frame games are largely told through documents, so you will want to read those if you care about the story. There will be those harmless ghosts that will show up. I get some of them, but will not get all of them. I miss at least two or three in this chapter alone. Maybe more. But you get points for getting these ghosts. Although I don't think you do in this chapter. I'm not really sure. Points are your currency. You use that to buy supplies, which is new for the series, I believe since Fatal Frame 4, which I haven't played. And you use it to buy upgrades for your camera. Is uh I love all these sounds. It makes me feel like I'm being successful. Maybe it's in this room. Well, you think? There haven't been very many rooms we've had access to. It appears we need a key. Try using the camera obscura. So it's more blatantly told here, but in the original games. A lot of times you would come across talismans you would have to take a picture of and then go find another thing to take a picture of to unlock a door or sometimes take a picture of something in order to learn where a key is or where to go to photo something else to unlock it. It's a different take on the whole find a thing to unlock a thing trope in most survival horror games. Here they're just telling this to you. Oh, sure, you'll just stand there and do nothing. Sure. Cunt. It definitely feels like this game was catering to people who have not played the series before, which makes sense since this was a Wii U exclusive originally. Came out in 2014 or 15, I'm not sure which. I don't know how I didn't get credit for that one. The film we have equipped right now has a long charge time, so I miss a couple ghosts because of that. But most of these mechanics were in the first three games, which are the ones I've played. They are releasing a port of Fatal Frame 4 next year, so I am pretty excited for that. Now this year, and as I said before, that will be released before this LP starts posting. I hope they clear up any bugs that were in the original. I would hope for an English dub, but that's not going to happen. That slow grab for an item started, I believe, in the fourth game. Well, missed that one. <sighs> I don't mind because I'm pretty sure... You don't get points for these ghosts, since we don't start accumulating points until the next chapter. But it's still kind of annoying. I want to at least somewhat look like I know what I'm doing in these games. Especially while in a building. That's going to change next chapter where we spend the entire time walking around the woods. I get really lost. I will say this for a Wii U game. This game looks quite beautiful. And the women in this game. My god. So I'm guessing we're some sort of apprentice to this chick. 
I think she goes and looks for missing people. Take a look but she also owns a shop, so... I'm not actually sure who these people are yet. Almost like I should have done my research. Hold on. Something there. Yes, I know. I have played this before. And here I'm just trying to get through all the tutorial prompts. And as I mentioned, I am blind, so sometimes I will stop to read these. I tried to edit that a little bit, but there's only so much I could do. This is what we came here for. Huh. We shouldn't stay here any longer than we need to. You're right. Let's head back before it gets dark. Okay. Our girl, Yuri, isn't a very talkative chap. At least not yet. I don't know if she talks more later, but she doesn't seem like a very talkative person. So now we get to backtrack. And I'm not going to say what I was just wondering in my head. Yuri, searching for objects like we did just now might be easy, but searching for people is much more difficult. Then we probably don't want to do that. Never follow after the shadow of someone who has been spirited away. You might end up seeing That tells me we are probably going to have to do that at some point in the game. Just a guess. Don't know for sure. I don't like it when there's a lot of talking when nothing's being said in a game. Most of this is tutorial stuff, but none of it really adds anything. And now we are introduced to combat. Oh god, get off! You jerk! And it has been a while since I played this, so I am going to have to watch this back in order to remember the controls, but most of them should be pretty easy to figure out. It was probably two months ago when I played all this stuff. And now it's been two and a half months since I recorded this commentary. And I'm just now getting ready to render the video. Although I do plan on moving faster with this LP. Now that I'm done with Silent Hill 3 and Blood Omen 2. So now we just follow the tutorial prompts and get through with this fight. I'm pretty sure most of the tutorials are done after this chapter. I know there's one where we learn how to put our hands in ghosts to see how they died, maybe? I can't remember what the purpose of that was. It is to see how they died. I'll show off a couple of those next video. All right, Casper, you're not exactly a very friendly ghost, are you? Actually, he's being very passive at the moment. I shouldn't smack talk a passive ghost. 
that might make them angry. And we won't like them if they're angry. Plus, there will be plenty of aggressive ghosts later if the other games are any indication. So, enjoy the passive one while we get it. Yeah, and there are those little balls you have to shoot, which is going to be annoying. I can just tell. I definitely noticed them in the next chapter. So they are a thing, and I don't like them. Then again, I'm also not a fan of balls. An auto-aim would be nice. Although they never had that in the other games, so... I can't really blame this one if it doesn't have that. Oh god. Oh god. No! Casper is no longer friendly! Fuck. Oh, I hate the charge time for this film. It's so bad. All right, ghost, say cheese. Didn't like that, did you? What else you got? Cuz I got tutorial prompts, I guess. The first game never gave you a tutorial like this. They just expected you to figure it out. Granted, the first ghost wasn't hard to deal with. The combat seems more involved in this game, which is going to annoy me, I'm sure. I was never good at combat in the first three games. And just chipping away at these ghosts isn't ideal. You usually want to get a fatal frame. Or a zero shot if you can. I'm not sure which ones of those are in this game. I'm sure the fatal frame is. The trouble with that is in order to get those shots, the ghost has to be attacking you. Oh god. Charge. Damn. Charge time! You're getting way too close and up in my business. And stay dead this time! I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have brought you here. I am alone. Dream again. Um, Mr. Hojo? 
Hisoka came by a little while ago. Oh, Hisoka. What does she want? She found the photo book. She did? Yeah, here. Take a look. Um, excuse me. Hello? Um, I'm looking for Hisoka Kurosawa. Is she here? Oh, I'm sorry, but she stepped out. My name is Fuyuhi Humino. I've been waiting for her to tell me if, if she could help me find someone. I still haven't got a reply from her. You're looking for someone? She might have gone to the mountain. Mount Hikami. Mount Hikami? Someone told me that they saw my friend there. It's an infamous suicide spot, isn't it? I don't know why Haruka would go to a place like that and without even saying a word to me. Don't worry. As soon as Hisoka gets back, I'll tell her. No. That's fine. I can't wait any longer. I'll go look for her myself. Huh? Come back! And here's where I was going to end the video originally, so I do play with the camera a little bit. Plus, I do like admiring this chick because she is quite beautiful. Yes, I simp over video game girls. It's a thing I've done pretty much since my channel's inception. So you should be used to it by now. So yeah, Mount Hikami is either a suicide spot in Japan or based off of a real one. I'm not sure which. And Kurosawa is the name of a family in that village in Fatal Frame 2. One of the houses you go in in that game is the Kurosawa house. So I'm not sure if Himiko or whatever her name is, is related to that family or not. It does seem like they try a bit too hard sometimes in the series to link characters together just for the sake of a connection. The male playable character in 3, I think his name was K, was related to the two twin girls from Fatal Frame 2. Not that much of a stretch at the time, but wait till you see the connections they make in this game. Shit's gonna get nutty.
And there's another document to pick up. Right here. And now that we've taken care of that, let's move on. There are quite a few documents to pick up in this chapter. And I assume throughout the game, like I mentioned before, a lot of the story is told through documents. So up the stairs. I would like to know more about the nature of the relationship this woman has with that other chick. I assume she's some sort of trainee for this business that she's running. But she also lives here, which is interesting because Miku from the first game lived with Rei from Fatal Frame 3 and was her employee. So I'm not sure if that's a Japan thing or not to live with your employer. I do like it when certain forms of media, video games, TV shows, movies, can encourage people to look into various concepts or things that they use in the story. We got a Japanese culture example of it right there. I also remember this TV show I watched about 10, 11 years ago that had a few things in it that made me curious. I think one was a mental disorder. One was a strange kind of knife, and another one was something to do with faking DNA results. All of which I looked up, and all of which were based in reality, which is interesting. All right, that was fascinating reading. We will explore this shop more later. We will be coming back here a lot, as well as going back and forth to that suicide mountain. It's probably going to be a bit repetitive. If certain elements of this game do get too repetitive, I will try to cut whatever I can. Say, if there's a lot of backtracking through the same area over and over again, Something like that would get cut. Just to save time. Hisoka. She must have gone to Mount Hikami to look for this girl. Mount Hikami. A place where many come to take their lives. I'm positive that for you he must have come here. And we begin our search for that lady that we met at the shop. And you can see it's much less bright, much darker, more dank, and a bit creepier. Either way, we will begin our search for that chick next time. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all next time with more Fatal Frame 5.